The Castle Hotel It is 1978. The steward at the Castle Hotel, on the edge of Loch Ness, is inebriated. But that is nothing unusual. Dressed in his white jacket uniform, the barman stands an unimpressive 5 foot 2 inches in height. He has an ancient face and withered grey hair. He looks like he should have retired in 1968, and right now he is worse for wear. The bar is not open. He's the only one there. And so he takes the opportunity to help himself to another generous measure of whisky. He may as well just finish the bottle of Grant's off, he thinks. And so he pours the remainder of the golden liquid from the bottle into his glass with an unsteady hand. He enjoys his whisky neat. The barman, come steward, sings a wee song to himself to raise his spirits after sinking most of a bottle over them. The bar area is dark and shadowy and the lights are low. He hears a banging sound and the bar entrance door swing open a bit and then quickly close. Who's that? He queries, trying to maintain his eye focus. Ach, away with ye! Nobody can scare Angus Macduff, he proclaims fearlessly. I'm afraid of nothing, he slurs. He takes a big swig from his glass. A shrill and creepy voice comes from a dark corner. It sounds a bit like a crazed owl, and it startles Angus causing him to choke on his whisky. Crouched down, hiding in the corner of the bar area, behind some stacked chairs, is a 12-year-old boy. A boy who has special powers. He's able to control people's minds telepathically. He has a mischievous grin on his face. Concentrating hard, he comes up with his next trick. He projects an apparition of a headless Highlander in full garb. The Highlander carries his head under his arm and he floats about just ten feet or so away from Angus, who is behind the bar. Angus is busy opening another bottle of Grant's. He turns around because he hears horrible breathing and a spooky woo type of sound. His face is short. He cannot believe what he's seeing. The ghostly Highlander in his kilt steps towards him. Angus falls back and pins himself against the bottles on the shelves behind him. Oh God, spare me, he shouts. He is shaking with fear. The ghost of the headless Highlander slowly steps towards Angus, the pathetic barman. Save me! shouts the fierty. The apparition fades away. The entrance door opens and in walks a huge, thick set man with a shotgun. He's not a ghost. In fact, he looks very solid in his dark brown dressing gown. He must be at least six foot two anyway and he completely fills the whole door frame. This man has a thick and unruly shock of curly dark brown hair and a big bushy red beard. Angus, what on earth's going on here? The big man demands in an impatient and gruff voice. Ghost, ghost, the head was ghost. The wee barman runs towards Andrew, the strapping hotel owner. Save me, Mr Forbes, save me. Angus clings on to Mr. Forbes' jacket collar. Andrew's voice booms out. There's no ghost here, you're drunk, that's all. You've been drinking your employer's whiskey, and now you're guilty, your conscience is punishing you. Angus points towards the corner, shaking his arm rapidly. There was a ghost. 
Angus is clinging to his boss who looks down at him with disdain. That's enough from you, Angus. There'll be no more talk of ghosts. And I won't have you complaining that you're too sick to work tomorrow either. Anyway, you now upstairs to your bed. Angus obeys the big man and walks towards the door. No, wait, Angus, come back. The wee man stands next to Andrew, who towers over him. I will say a prayer for your soul. And you say a prayer for forgiveness too. Angus nods his head. Andrew closes his eyes, clasps his big hands to his chest and adopts a look of intense sincerity. Oh God, forgive this man who sinned. Send him no more visions to puggle his mind. Amen. Amen, says Angus, without too much conviction, eager to end this embarrassing situation. He then scuttles off, followed by Andrew, who closes the door and switches the lights off. In the corner, behind the stairs, there is a young lad with a big grin on his face. <laughs>